everyone, and welcome to another edition of Connecting with Kim. I'm your host, Kim Drokey, and we're so glad you joined us today on Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network for another wonderful information flow from us to you. So I just want to say that you can catch the audio of my show on Sun Radio, that's down at Sun City Center, and on your favorite streaming platform, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3.30. And of course, you can watch anytime you want on watch.tbae.net. So before we start today, the show, I have a special announcement to make. I am so proud to announce that I am partnering with the Spring of Tampa Bay, who is going to provide my on-air wardrobe, which includes these fabulous jewels I have on, this necklace, the clothes. Uh, they are going to provide my on-air wardrobe going forward. And in case you are not familiar with the Spring of Tampa Bay, and you know I don't normally resort to notes, but I'm going to, they provide safe spaces and empowering services to survivors of domestic violence and their children. And if you are not familiar with them, you need to acquaint yourself with this wonderful organization because they are one of the largest in Florida. They are certified, they have facilities, and they also have two stores, the thrift store on North Willow and the boutique, which is on the corner of Swan and Henderson. And they are providing my clothes from the boutique uh, for the show and I'm extremely grateful to them and I am very happy for this partnership. So. Uh, Give them, if you've never been there before, go visit because they have great stuff. And the outfit I have on a day and all the jewels came from them. So let's get on with the show. I am so excited to introduce my guest today. She is a legend, an absolute, I don't even know how to properly introduce her. Uh, so I'm just going to give her the name and then we'll talk a little bit about where she's, uh, the organization she represents and why um, I wanted her on connecting with Kim so badly. So my guest today in the chair is Dottie Groover Skipper. Welcome Dottie to Connecting with Kim. Thank you so much Kim. It's an honor and, and a privilege to be here with you today. Oh, I, I love that <laughs> but I feel like it's my <laughs> honor. So uh, Dottie is the founder, the president, and the CEO of the Heart Dance uh, Foundation. And that their mission is to minister to women in the adult sex entertainment industry. And we're going to talk a lot about that today. Uh, Dottie's led her groundbreaking work in this area. Uh, she's received so many awards and accolades, I, I couldn't even list them all. Uh, and she's also um, is with the No Move Foundation, or excuse me, no More Foundation. See, I can't even read my own writing. The No More Foundation. And their mission is anti-trafficking. So we're also going to talk about that because that's something Dottie is now a part of. And we want to devote some time and attention to that. But as everyone knows, mm -hmm. I start always start my shows with giving my guests an opportunity to share their journey through life thus far as much as they feel like sharing, which leads to the, to the point that we're going to mm -hmm. talk today. Mm -hmm. So... Great. Well, my life's journey has been a long one so far. Um, I was raised in a wonderful Christian home in Brandon, actually. Um, graduated from Brandon High School. Had always done some volunteer work with those who were a little less fortunate and impoverished, um, even through my college years. Um, moved to Miami. I was actually a Miami Dolphin cheerleader. I know. In 1978 through 80, my claim to fame there was I got run over on the football field by Larry Zonka. I was black and blue for weeks. Um, but coming back to Tampa, I was commissioned to teach self-esteem classes in one of the most marginalized areas of Tampa Bay. And in that class was a 13-year-old girl who was so disruptive, I could tell she had severe anger issues. She'd be like throwing chairs across the room and just and crazy stuff. I was getting ready to kick her out, but it was a self-esteem class and I felt like I could not kick her out. So she came to me and asked if she could bring her four-year-old sister with her to the next class. And I said, of course. She brought her four-year-old sister. And you know sometimes, Kim, how you just know that you know that you know something isn't your right. Your gut is telling it's, you it's something, your right? Gut. Your instinct is, that's is speaking right. to you. That's exactly how I felt when I met the four-year-old. So it, 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 it just bothered me so much. I asked the housing authority who had hired me to do these classes if we could just find out a little bit of information about the, the two girls. Long story short, it comes back, the 13-year-old and her four-year-old sister lived with their grandmother, 
who was selling both of them on the street every night in exchange for drugs. Oh. And to make the matter even more horrific, the four-year-old had a sexually transmitted disease. Oh my God. I can't tell you how that shook me. That must have shattered you. To the core yeah. because I, I did not grow up. I had never been like exposed that. Right. to that kind of evil. Right. So I really believe that a string was plucked in my heart way back then, 40 plus years ago, to get involved. At that time, there was no label of, of human trafficking. There wasn't that label. Um, and everybody, when I would try to explain the situation, they looked at me like I was crazy, like I had two heads. It was really bizarre. So I'm, you know, fast forward, I am absolutely thrilled that today there's so much awareness on human trafficking and the sex trade industry um, that hopefully we can bring some kind of resolve to it. Um, in the near future. So that's that's how I got into what I have been doing for the last 40 plus years and which led me to open um, a ministry called Heart Dance Foundation mm -hmm. where for the last 16 years we've been going into the strip clubs of Tampa Bay and minister to the women who are really trapped in that industry. They feel like they really they don't have any other means to support themselves. Uh, many have felony records, many are pimped out mm -hmm. and definitely um, with a trafficker. So, you know, they, that's all that they know how to do and they have felony records. So even if they can get out, it's very challenging for them to find a viable job, it's even sometimes a place to live mm -hmm. with the felony records. Right. So we come along beside them and help them as best we can to get a GED, to to um, go to employers saying, will you give this this woman a chance? Right. So um, that's that's kind of in a real s small nutshell, you know, what I'm doing now. And I think um, just being bold enough and courageous enough to walk through the doors that are open to you, um, I think is what has led me to to be able to do the work that I do and to be able to be appointed by the governor and the attorney general to to statewide um, you know boards that are working on this issue just that boldness and that courage to well, walk through the doors like I never thought I'd be going into strip clubs well <laughs> you know? obviously obviously you had courage and boldness because uh, yes. you were a, a Miami Dolphin cheerleader so <laughs> I mean to me right there I mean because I remember when that whole the cheerleading started right uh, with the NFL teams right and I mean you know the outfits are can be I'm not saying every single one is they've but the gotten outfits a little, can be a little more you know, uh, skimpy. skimpy and revealing <laughs> yes and so you got to have and I know most of those women are extremely good-looking yes um, and um, very nicely put together yeah um, <laughs> so you you had to have boldness and courage yes and that was part of my journey too because some things that I witnessed mm -hmm. as a cheerleader going to parties um, and I was always like the designated driver oh Dottie will get us home so I, I've always had that kind of <laughs> mother <laughs> hen in, in me I, I was <laughs> and I remember calling my dad going dad you know I'm gonna be wearing this outfit but that doesn't mean you know anything about me has changed so I remember you know having those conversations with him but um, that definitely is part of my story and I think one of the reasons why I'm where all the success I've had today and what's even more amazing is two years ago the Miami Dolphin Foundation uh, contacted me because I had stayed in touch with the Alumni Association and they invited me to come down and train the current staff and cheerleaders on human trafficking. So oh that my gosh, it was what an like honor. full circle. Yeah. It was really quite came quite amazing. Yes. So you so you were a Miami Dolphin cheerleader, and then you came back to Tampa to to teach these self esteem classes by Correct. the housing authority. I'm assuming you were teaching them. Was it in a school? Was it in a, a community center? What you know? Where were you? Um, yeah, it was actually it was in the College Hill area. Okay. So it was in their community center. Okay. Um, and that's where this and this so, incident happened so you came um, across you came across this uh, young girl at 13 and her and her sister at four uh, who were being I mean I, I it it was trapped I can't by even, the grandmother. I can't even uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so 
from that point, what happened? You you said you said I've got to I've got to be mo way more involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually shut down for a little while because it was so traumatic mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. I had never experienced that. But then I started doing volunteer work at sexual assault centers and things like that, and just did that kind of volunteer work. Um, and then also I, I had a corporate job. I actually worked for St. Joseph's Hospital, their corporate wellness. So I was going into all these corporations, you know, teaching stress management, weight management, you know, nutrition, all that kind of thing. But on the side, I was always involved with, um, you know, sexual assault victims and survivors. And then, then when human trafficking became more and more people were becoming more and more aware, I started getting more speaking engagements and all of that for, for training for awareness on human trafficking. So that's, and then I was called to, to start this ministry that 16, 17 years ago, and I just kind of dropped out of the corporate arena mm -hmm. and um, have stayed with, you know, raising awareness on human trafficking and then doing the best that I can possibly do to help uh, men, women, and children mm -hmm. who are enslaved in, in sexual exploitation. Well, I know we talk about women and children a lot, but there are men. Absolutely. I, I, I've done some um, for shows in the past when, with this, when, when Connecting with Kim is just a radio show. Mm -hmm. uh, I did some shows with uh, different organizations that worked with domestic violence yes. and uh, these kinds of issues, and I was absolutely shocked at the um, statistics for men. Yes. I mean, because we don't think of it that way. But they are. But they absolutely They're also are. victims. Yes. So uh, let me ask you something. So you you have this ministry to uh, women and, and men in the, mm -hmm. um, in the uh, adult entertainment industry. Correct. We'll, we'll, we'll say it that way. Yeah. Um, so now you there's all these clubs. So tell me what happens when you walk through the door. <laughs> I mean, you know. It's, it's quite amazing because we just show up. And we bring gifts, and we usually have food for like the bouncers, you know, the the door guys, um, like homemade cookies and things like that. And they know who we are, you know. Oh, they call us the church ladies. Like the church ladies are here. <laughs> Sometimes the DJ will announce from the DJ booth. The church ladies are in the house, and everybody turns and looks at us, and we just you know smile and walk on to the dressing room. And What's incredible are the women that are sitting in the club with their dates see us come in and they leave their dates and follow us into the dressing room because they know for even if it's for five minutes somebody is going to speak truth into them and give them just a little glimmer of hope you know that there is hope that they don't have to stay trapped in this kind of lifestyle the majority of women that I have encountered in this industry are not there by choice. Many people think that they choose to be there, and there might be some that do, yes. but many um, feel like they have no other choice. So really, they're kind of forced to, 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 to be in this arena um, because of their circumstances. I, if you're just joining us now on Connecting with Kim, my guest today is Dottie Groover Skipper, who is the CEO, founder, and president of the Heart Dance Foundation, which is a ministry for uh, those folks I involved in the adult entertainment industry. And she's also part of, and we'll, we'll talk about this in a few minutes, uh, No More Foundation, which is devoted to anti-trafficking. Uh, so you walk in, you talk to them, you give them glimmers of hope, but does when you walk out, does it end? What, what happens after that? No. Um, we, they can choose whether they want to reconnect with us mm -hmm. outside of the club, okay. and many times they do. We'll get a phone call, and we'll go meet them for coffee. Many times we have to help them develop a safety plan mm -hmm. to get out because their, their pimps are right. right there. So we help them develop a safety plan, and if they need a, a safe place to go, we have resources that we're partners with that they could go to a, a safe home or we help them get out of town somewhere else where it's safe for them where mm -hmm. they can start a new life so we help provide um, those resources as best we can we're a very small ministry but um, how, many pe how many people are involved in your ministry altogether I would say maybe about 50 mm -hmm. um, we have churches, local churches, that provide our outreach gifts and bags and mm -hmm. food. And we have a team of men that go out with us. They, they don't go inside the clubs. They stay outside and just kind of are our 
source of protection while we're in. But what we're seeing, these men, are, we call them our men of valor. They're building relationship with the door guys, the bouncers, sometimes the club manager or owner. Um, sometimes we on the team, the women will come out of the club to our men of valor who are encircling, um, you know, some of the, the employees, men, employees, and just talking with them and building relationship with them, inviting them to breakfast and things like that and helping them also climb out of the pit. What we have realized is not only the majority of the women who are working in this uh, entertainment industry um, were sexually abused as children, mm -hmm. so are the men yeah. that are working in that industry. I, so there's it would that follow, wouldn't it? tie and yeah. they just felt like they just don't know how to get out of that. Right. So our men of valor connect with these men and help them as best they can as well um, climb out of that lifestyle. It's well, pretty amazing. If that's your life every day and that's what you're surrounded with your whole life growing up and your whole life why would you think there's something else? That's right. Right? Why would That's you know right. anything else? Because everybody that you associate with and everything, everything you're part of every day is part of that world. That's right. And what we have found, just like 40 plus years ago with that 4-year-old and 13-year-old mm -hmm. mm -hmm. being sold by their grandmother, many of the victims and survivors of human trafficking and in, in the clubs as well were, are being sold by a family member mm -hmm. or a trusted family friend. So we can no longer say it's about stranger danger and, and teach on that because that danger could be right in the same house that they're living in. Right. Um, so it's Well, it's that's the statistic for sexual abuse, right? That's right. Uh, most of it is by a family member that's or a right. trusted family friend. That's right. It's not some stranger that just comes up off of the street or whatever. That's right. Uh, it's, it's somebody they know because I mean, it would, and it makes sense to me because how could you, you, it, it, you wouldn't be able to make that connection unless that person already had some sort of relationship with you or trust with you. That's right. And That's it's just, right. I, you know, it's reprehensible. It's and it's about, abhorrent. yeah, vulnerabilities yeah. that predators yeah. prey right. on the vulnerabilities of the most vulnerable. Yeah. Exactly. In fact, that's my informal definition of human trafficking is the business of the exploitation of vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've, I've trained the school district last year and we just are training them again this upcoming year. And um, that is my definition, the business of the exploitation of vulnerabilities. Yeah. And many, many of us um, have vulnerabilities and many of our our students, our youth, have tremendous vulnerabilities mm -hmm. that predators predators know what to look for and then they zero in mm -hmm. on that vulnerability, gain their trust, and then when they have that trust, uh, maybe become girlfriend, boyfriend, mm -hmm. okay, you love me, you trust me, this is what you now need to do for me. Mm -hmm. And that's how our youth get, get, get roped in and groomed. Well, now you have another mission that you're on, and we should spend some time talking about that, which is the No More Foundation. Yes. Uh, and so talk to us about that. And that's yes. involved, it just for those of you who don't know, it's their mission is anti-trafficking. Yes. It kind of uh, flows from what you've been doing, It right? does. It does. I was the anti-trafficking director for the state of Florida for the Salvation Army for several years and decided it was time to to do some other things. It's still in that same arena, all the while Heart Dance Foundation continues because it's all volunteer, my, my organization, so continued with Heart Dance. But so No More came to me and said, we, we want you to help us build our anti-trafficking capacity. They've been in existence for like 10 years. Okay. And, um, four, Are they here in Tampa? They're here in Tampa. Four pillars, no more poverty, no more orphans, no more slavery, and no more hopeless. So they've been in the orphan care space for a long time. Mm -hmm. and, and realize the overlap between our kids in foster care mm -hmm. and human trafficking. Right. So they brought me on a couple of years ago to help build the anti-trafficking uh, arm of the No More Foundation, and we're exploding right now. We just last year we received funding and appropriation uh, funding from the state to do trainings. I've been a training machine for two years, and then. Somehow, luckily, um, by the grace of God, we were able to stay in the budget this year for more training dollars, and we have trained the school system this year and, and um, 
we'll do it next year. And we have trained since last year over 30,000 individuals on human trafficking, just raising awareness because knowledge is power. That's right. So the more people, if that you know what know, to look for, right? The signs to look for, because and there are signs. There are signs, and then okay, I see something, what in the world do I do about it? Exactly. So if we could just educate on those two things, signs to look for, and then what to do if you see something, then we've, we've done a good job. Well, it's hard to believe that you and I have never met before today because we have so many mutual friends. I can't even tell you how many mutual friends we have. And, um, but uh, I, I wanted people to understand that big events, because I've seen a lot of the fa Facebook posts and I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of the press coverage, big events like the Super Bowl, yes. the, you know, the different uh, championships that are played in the city and so forth. These are huge opportunities for traffickers. Absolutely. And I, I don't think people really, really understand that and connect with that. Right, right. And anytime there's a big influx of people that come into a, a city or a town for any kind of event, not only sporting events, but our political events. Concerts. Um, uh, concerts, um, just, you know, any kind of big event. Um, will bring predators into the area to make money uh, selling other people, <laughs> sell, buying and selling other people, and globally to a tune of $150 billion a year globally uh, go into the pockets of of traffickers buying and selling other human beings. That is a huge number, 150 billion. 150 billion, um, but it is big events. And I know when we had Super Bowl here, um, you know, I work with the the task force that's led. Uh, it's an eight county task force led by um, Police Chief An uh, Anthony Holloway. Mm -hmm. um, so we worked very hard during the Super Bowl and WrestleMania. Uh, you know, any big sporting well, event. Well, any, any we event. We're not picking, okay, so people, <laughs> we are not picking on specific events. No. But we are just saying that these, uh, these things that we know and love and want to be a part of present opportunities for others to do bad things. That's, that's absolutely correct. Uh -huh. And we have to know that. We have to know that and accept that. And we have to we have to be educated so that we know uh, if we see something, say something, that's right? right? To that's me, right. it's that simple. That's right. If, if you know what you're looking for and you see it, then you need to say something. That's right. And we have um, our tremendous, wonderful Sheriff Chronister mm -hmm. um, is very passionate about this issue. Mm -hmm. And um, I've worked with him on, on several things. So we, we do have our, our leadership. You know, I helped to form the Hillsborough Commission on Human Trafficking two years ago I, when Commissioner Overman came on the board. I met with her and said, we really need to get a commission started, just like Pasco County has. So she, she listened, and we got a commission. And I served on that commission for two years and just recently rolled off um, because I'm, I'm doing a lot. <laughs> you <laughs> are. I, I thought other people uh, can you know, really serve on that commission as well and do a great job. So we have the leadership in our county, um, really in this whole region, who are passionate that you know, to, to get things done. Um, so it is, it's if you see something, say something. And it could be signs, um, you know, um, our LGBTQ um, plus community are high targets. You know, it's really sad that many times a, a youth will come out to mm -hmm. their parents and the parents kick them out of the house. Yeah. Just, can't even fathom I can't, that. I, yeah, but I can't it, even fathom that. It happens quite a bit. I bet it does. So who is there on the streets for them? Um, come and be a part of our family. Mm -hmm. So they might take them in for a couple weeks. Okay, I've now I've provided shelter and food for you. You got to pay it back. This mm -hmm. is what you got to do. Mm -hmm. So they send them out on the streets. So we see that a lot. So the LGBTQ plus community is a high target, as well as our youth who are mentally and physically challenged. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's just shameful. It is. It's mind-blowing uh, and, it's, the and vulnerabilities it's reprehensible. That are exploited. Yeah. Um, so signs to look for, just like, you know, the 13-year-old and the 4-year-old. The 13-year-old 
was so angry. The four-year-old acted like a typical four-year-old, but it's just that gut feeling. Um, and I, that's what I would like to say. If you have a gut feeling that something isn't right, I would encourage everyone. You can always call 911 if it's an immediate situation. Mm -hmm. Um, but don't ever try to intervene yourself because that perpetrator is right there watching. Um, but the National Human Trafficking Hotline number, it's 1-888-373-7888. So you can say it again. call that number. We one, can't say it enough. 1-888-373-7888. So you can call. You can even remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. They don't even have to know it's you that's calling and mm -hmm. then that call gets trickled down to local law enforcement who will go and investigate. Well, I we're we're almost out of time, but oh. I, I gotta say, you know, you and, and she believe me folks, she has she's the recipient of numerous awards, recognition, uh, She's a legend, and she's being so modest. I mean, she's not even talking I've about been her. around a long time, Kim. <laughs> but she's she's really been a person who has made a difference in helping others, and I'm just so honored uh, and so pleased that you came on Connecting with Kim because these are subjects near and dear to my heart, mm -hmm. and I want people to be aware and informed and able to do something. Right. It's not enough to just know; it's you've got to do something. Right. I, and I would encourage if anyone is interested in taking a training uh, through the No More Foundation, um, you can go on the No More uh, Foundation's website, which is www.fornomore, that's F-O-R-N-O-M-O-R-E dot org uh, slash training. And all our trainings will come up. And they're offered free of charge because we've gotten this state grant money to educate um, across the state of Florida. So if anyone is interested, I would highly encourage them to, to check us out and get trained because knowledge is power. And, you know, if you see something too, you know, if it's not anything, okay. But if it is, you could be saving a life. You could be saving a life. You could be making a difference. Well, Dottie, thank you for so much for being my guest today and thank connecting you, with Kim. I'm very uh, honored and uh, I'm very pleased that we have brought this subject to our watching and listening audience so that maybe someone out there is motivated to uh, take a step, to make a call. They've seen something. They know something. Uh, and there is help. There is a way. So thank you for joining us today on this edition of Connecting with Kim. Uh, we'll be back next week with another edition, uh, another exciting show for you to watch and learn. That's my whole goal is keep you informed, up to date, and most importantly, living your best life in our corner of paradise. So thank you so long, and we'll see you next time.